I just need to start. That's my part. That's the hard part, I think. Can I say hello? Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I am the co-owner of Kumjani Craft Coffee and Gallery. I own it with my mum and we opened in February of this year. Took our time, you know, mum was running an art gallery on Fifth Avenue. I was in school. Um, when I graduated, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but um, obviously we keep Africa in our hearts all the time. So we wanted to do something that we could help people back home. So we just decided to combine the two because we couldn't really find a cute little quirky coffee shop that you could just go to and feel like you were at home. So that was our main goal. The coffee shop we wanted people to come in and feel like they were coming into our house for a new coffee. We wanted to make sure that we did, you know, locally roasted organic beans, um, freshly roasted every week. Um, so that's what we've done with black tulip and perla from Miami. And then, yeah, the gallery side, we wanted to, of course, have um, beautiful handmade items from Southern Africa. So we have um, all fair trade, handmade, mainly one of a kind things from South Africa, Zimbabwe and Zambia. Um, and we touch 300 people's lives directly from just the purchasing of the products that we have in our galleries. My passion, my baby, is the Kundani Project. And that is our nonprofit that we have recently started, and that is something that I'm 100% passionate about. Of course, the gallery is great, the coffee shop's great. Who doesn't love coffee? But that—that that is my—that's my passion. That's my, that's what I want about. Um, I wanted to call it the Kunjani Project because I didn't want to hone in on just one cause or just one area. I didn't want to just focus on you know, water or animals or um, children or something like that. I just, I wanted it to be the project so that we could do a number of different things and we weren't just tied to one cause. The Kanjani project for wells and boreholes in Zimbabwe, that is the first thing that we're going to be doing and we're super excited about that. There's a huge need for wells and um, means of getting clean water to people and it's it's crazy when you start looking looking into it you realize how bad the situation is and um, how lucky we are living here which is one of the reasons that I think I had a hard time when we first moved here in 2007 um, it's just a very different way of life of course it would be Zimbabwe to Naples is a huge change but just I think the perspective is completely different for us you know growing up in a third world country you you focus so much more on human connection and interactions and just you know being around people and stuff like that you focus less on material material possessions but it's always driven me to want to do something back home which is why the Kunjani project is an absolute dream for me and I'm so excited, I can't wait for it to take off and for us to actually start doing stuff in Africa. And so the, one of the main things that I wanted to do with the Kunjani project is actually go and be on the ground in a very hands-on, direct way. I know exactly where the money that we raise will be going. I, I will be able to say it's gonna help this person and this person and this family and this many children and have very real life accurate information about who is going to be affected by the work that we're going to do and that's something that is extremely important to me because I don't want it to just be another fundraising campaign or something that we do that's not tangible you know you raise money and you send it off and you hope that it gets to the people no like I wanted to do something that I could actually be there take a team of people and even go further and change some people's perspectives from here you know and be there with the people that have hardly anything but they're so happy and they're so grateful. You see kids that all they ever want to do is go to school. Um, but because of you know
know their lives that they live and their circumstances and having to support their families from a very young age or for instance the water having to walk miles and miles and miles a day just for water of course you can't go to school if you are walking half a marathon to get a get a bucket of water but all they want to do is go to school and on the few days that they get to go to school they are so happy they're able to be kids they're able to feel eight years old and ten years old and whatever they might be and they get done with school and they they don't have pencils or books or pens so they get sticks and they practice writing in the sand and the sheer joy on their face is in their life but they are filled with a zest for life despite that and that is where the difference is. When we left there were no hardly any food on the shelves um, nothing was getting imported of course the farmers now weren't exporting because there were no farmers and so it was very difficult to just go about your day today um, you couldn't just go to the shops and buy groceries uh, you couldn't just flip a switch and have the lights come on because there was no electricity a lot of the time so we were running on generators um, but then there was no fuel to fuel the generators so we have this saying in Zimbabwe we will just make a plan and no matter what just kept happening you would always say oh we'll just make a plan but that's not a way of life it's why would you have to just keep making a plan just to have a light switch come on Everyone that meets my mom says she's the most amazing woman they've ever met and it's true, it's 100% true, she is genuine and real and she's, she's my hero, she's my inspiration every single day, I, she's the best role model I could ever have asked for um, as a mother and as a best friend and of course as a business partner and just a cheerleader in life. Um, so yeah, she inspires me every day and on days where I feel like I am not doing enough with my life, I look at her and I just, I know that what we're doing is making a difference and if you can just touch one person's life, you've done more than, you know, you did the day before and yeah, I just, our motto is lifting each other up with love and that's what we do as a family and that's what I try and do with my, you know, my friends and the people around me and that's what we will do in Africa. We just, you know, love. Love, love is all we need. So, 